up this road is a hidden gem of a cemetery. Let's take a ride up. We are coming up into Pleasant Green Cemetery, just outside Magna, Utah, in the foothills of the Ochre Mountains. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm the Jaywalker. We're in Pleasant Green Cemetery, just outside of Magna, Utah. Let's take a walk. So, Pleasant Green Cemetery, as you mentioned, just outside of Magna, Utah. It was uh, established in 1883. It was originally established by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, and until 1983 was owned and operated by the church. In 1983, the church organized a nonprofit called the Pleasant Green Cemetery Preservation and Development Association and handed over ownership and and the run of the cemetery over to the nonprofit. The church as well as the the nonprofit have wanted to really maintain the the look of the more natural look of of the area in and how the cemetery looks so obviously there's no there's no grass it's not a memorial park type type cemetery still has a lot of meadow grass there's sagebrush there's a lot of things that are just it's just not very cemetery like as far as what we think of a lot of cemeteries are or should be uh, now now along with along with keeping the more natural look of of the area they also don't have a lot of policies in place for types sizes um, structure of gravestones or anything like that so there's there's a lot of variety in the family plots in the headstones and just how they overall still the overall feel of how the cemetery is
Now the overall size of the, the cemetery is roughly about eh, maybe 10 to 15 acres. It's really a, of a pretty small cemetery in size. The land around us is, is owned by the Kennecott Cor Copper Corporation, Kennecott Copper, uh, who, who mines uh, quite a quite an extensive amount uh, here in the here in the Oker Mountains. The the uh, cemetery was here first, so they were able to stay and and continue on burying people here, even with uh, the mines buying up buying up land all around. Now we made it back to the, the north end of the cemetery here and you can see the, the fence here and we'll just walk up and take a look down into this little gully down over here. Now, along with um, we're talking, there's there's not a whole lot of <laughs> not a whole lot of policy as far as what has to be done. Um, now, along with not having a lot of um, rules and regulations about uh, the headstones and family plots. And those type of things. One of the nice things about Pleasant Green also is the the fact that it's one of the few cemeteries in Utah that allows for natural burial. Uh, no vaults are required. Embalming is not required here. They really do allow for truly natural burial. I don't know all the, the rules and regulations that they have to be able to do that, but it is, it is one really nice thing about, about the cemetery. Now my, my objective in making these videos of, of me walking through, through the cemeteries is there's a few things that I, that I want to do. I want to first off respect the, the cemeteries, respect the people who were buried here, respect the families. But also, I'm very interested in learning and finding out the history of, of some of the of a lot of the cemeteries and finding the history of some of the people who were buried here as well. There are, you know, some very unique things that I found in so many different cemeteries as I've as I've walked through and I really want to share a lot of that because it's something that I'm interested in and I'm starting to to find that there's other people like me who are interested in things that might be considered not not exactly normal often enough. I'm 
Now we're coming up towards the eastern side of the cemetery. See the, the fence demarcating, demarcating the eastern edge here. And also, while we're here, I might be able to through the fence here and I'll try and get a, a better picture when we uh, come through not not needing to look through the fence way here um, a, a picture looking east towards Salt Lake and the rest of the valley here as, as I mentioned we are clear out on the the western side of the valley here and it's, it's nice kind of taking a look from the other side. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite headstones here in the cemetery is just right up here. Um, kind of in this tree. Let's, oh, let's bring it in. Let me move the branch here. And one of the reason why I like it is um, it's that, uh, that engraving of that rose. I just think that it's amazingly pretty. But I just find that that stone in particular has always caught my eye as I've walked through. Now, one thing that, uh, with the running of the cemetery, where it is a nonprofit that that runs it, um, they're, they are um, run through you know, donations and the buying of plots. And they also rely a lot on um, volunteers. Um, the, the board that runs the nonprofit is made up of volunteers. Um, and those volunteers are family members of people who are buried here in the cemetery. One of the one of the little rules that they do have with with that is those that serve on the board um, they they prefer not to have them working in the cemetery or funeral industry beyond uh, beyond working in the beyond working on the board of of the cemetery and. My understanding is um, they want that to, to again help keep with the with the natural order of things. And we're gonna it's gonna come up here to, to almost the southern edge of the the cemetery here. So we've pretty well walked clear clear around the cemetery and we're gonna kind of go and as soon as we get up to more of the more of the south end here where my my goal is to start circling around and start getting more into the the middle of the cemetery and show some of the Some of the more cool things here. So, if you'll, so, so there's the the front gate that we came in just a moment ago. So we're gonna take a walk this way here, go through more of the middle of the cemetery. Now, like I mentioned, there's not a lot of policy set up to to regulate the the fencing around 
family plots and and it's not a lot of regulation on the the stones and such that are here so there's there are a lot of different different ways of delineating um, what's here so obviously right in front there's there's just rocks and cinders delineating that one and then just to the west is a wrought iron fence with cinders on the ground with the next family plot over right right next door there they have cement like a cement block or some poured cement with cinders or this one's this one here is just a poured cement foundation type with no cinders but a pine tree in the back. Walking across the one section of paved road that goes into the cemetery and even back behind the flagpole it turns to it turns to dirt. So really they are trying to, to keep it more natural, but they're they're working um, to make upgrades as they move along, mainly because again it's you know it's a nonprofit and they're and say they struggle, but they do so much through volunteer work in the community from the community and family members that you know it takes takes time to get a lot of it done. with having differentiation with all of the um, all of the headstones there's a lot of art and different things that that gets put up and you know the the cemetery allows a lot of it because you know they want it to be really a very family oriented type place and they want the they want the families of those buried here to to really be involved in what goes on. Now, go back over this way. Um, so Salt Lake, for those of you who don't, uh, don't know, never been out here, it's, uh, it is up kind of in a mountain valley. We are, we are in what's considered a, a high desert. It's not as high as, um, Denver, the mile high city, which, you know, of course is 
Oh, 5,500 feet. Salt Lake's about 4,500 feet. Uh, but we are in the mountains and we do get um, different weather. It's very dry. Sometimes we, and even with that, we, we still get some, some weather and different things. Um, it's a, a mo family monument that uh, it's been kind of weathered away, but with um, again the family's taken time to to put the metal the metal plaque around it to again kind of show who who owns it and who you know who's buried around here. And again, you see um, a differentiation in a family plot, like railroad ties and, and wood, again with the cinders. Right. Come through over to here, and a few more points of interest, and in, I think we'll. We'll go from there, go there. Um, so coming back over here again, see a nice cool family plot here. I'm pointing with the camera here. Um, let's see. Now, there are people driving through here and occasionally you get it, but one, uh, one thing that I do like about Pleasant Green, it's usually, usually pretty, pretty chill. Not a lot of people here. Um, this is one of my favorite little sections here is this family plot here with this cool um, wrought iron and granite fence. That's the last little thing that I want to, the last, uh, last point of interest that I want to show is uh, the, the first burial here in Pleasant Green. And uh, she's documented and she's marked out. And with Sarah Haynes, we'll come into this little family plot here. And as you can see, she's documented here. Grave is off to the left here. We'll come around and all right and she is buried right here and that's what we've got time for today. Hey everybody thanks again for joining me on the Jaywalker. Come with me again on the next episode where we'll find another interesting graveyard or interesting graves. Thanks.